Welcome to the Battery Testing Mentor Podcast. My name is Johannes and here I discuss all topics around battery testing and battery safety and battery handling. Short, on the point and with practical advice. Also, sign up for the email update that I send out with every episode. Every episode I send the key takeaways straight into your inbox if you sign up on www.batterytestingmentor.com. And if you have any question, feedback, just hit reply on that email and you directly reach me. With that, enough of this general stuff, let's go into the episode. So today I want to talk about the thermal runaway of a lithium ion cell. I talked in the very beginning of this podcast about the different risks that we have. We showed there this, this matrix. On the one hand, we had the operation kind of inside the operation and then outside the operation condition for the battery. And then we have the different risks, the mechanical, the thermal, the electrical and the chemical risk aspects. And if you look in this outside the operational condition area, we have all these risks coming together in the thermal runaway. What is a thermal runaway? Very simply speaking, it is a chemical reaction inside the cell. It's important it's always in the cell like even if you have a battery pack the battery pack doesn't go into a thermal runaway it's really the cell sometimes several cells go at the same time into a thermal runaway but still it happens on the cell level it happens in the chemistry inside the battery pack the cell and then the other point of the thermal runaway is it is a thermal reaction so it has something to do with heat and it has this runaway thing, like it will be hotter and hotter and hotter. So this reaction inside the cell generates heat and this heat leads to an increase in the reaction and then an even hotter um, temperature and, and more heat generation, hotter heat or more heat up rate and so on. But in the very beginning, you have an, a very slow heat up rate. Like if really something starts, um, the cell slowly heats up and gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And at this point, you can still interrupt this. You can stop it by just applying cooling, by, by stopping the uh, energy intake, kind of the, the reason why the cell heats up. Very often it has to do with electricity. And there really switching off cooling is the, the best way and uh, you can pretty much contain it. But at one point, it really starts into this thermal runaway. Before I go into this, the question is, of course, what makes such a thermal runaway start? And there we have basically a lot of reasons. I want to stay here on the top level. And the top level is first heat is generated from some, some reaction, some external effect. Like kind of, for example, that the connection to the battery, to the cell, uh, the bond is not well enough. And then you have a high resistance there. And when you charge and discharge, you generate a lot of heat at this resisting res resistance point at this bond. Or it can be also internal that there is really some manufacturing defect. And that leads to, to some reaction that generates heat while operating the cell. But yeah, there are many different ways. Let's focus on the reaction, what comes out basically. So you have an, an reaction, the cell heats up. You have not uh, noticed, for example, that it heats up. It heats up more and more and more. And with every degree more, basically, the process is increasing a little bit and the heating rate is increasing. And this is kind of the, really this characteristic of the thermal runaway that gets more and more and more the, the hotter it gets. And also the, at one point it gets so fast that you really have this exponential increase in temperature. At the beginning, nothing really is, is visible. It's all happening inside. First you have this external heat, then slowly the, the solid electrolyte interface layer is affected. That's the layer from the anode to the electrolyte. And it kind of helps that the ions can go from the anode into the electrolyte. So this solid electrolyte interface is 
decomposing. I mean, after some, some time first, it's only damaged, but this damage already increases the reaction. It increases the temperature and then it gets more and more damaged. At one point, then also the electrolyte is part of this reaction because the electrolyte is fluid. At a certain temperature, it starts boiling. It starts turning into a gas and with any transfer from fluid form into gas, it expands in volume and it expands significantly in volume and that leads to a pressure buildup inside the cell. I come to this pressure buildup later. First, let's go further in this electrolyte in the thermal runaway process. So we have the solid electrolyte interface. We have the electrolyte as partner in, in this process. Then also comes the separator. Separator is often in this membrane between anode and cathode, kind of making sure that the electrons do not travel between uh, anode and cathode, but go are outside in the current line in the cable. At a certain temperature, this is also affected, and then it starts melting, for example. And there we really have a potentially big problem because the uh, separator really, as I said just now, it separates the anode and the cathode. If it's gone, there is a risk that anode and cathode touch each other, and then you have an internal short circuit. And this internal short circuit leads to very, very high currents. It leads to an, an extreme heat up inside the cell, and kind of then the, the thermal runaway really goes parabolic. Nevertheless, it's not an ungiven. It doesn't mean the electro separator is melting. Therefore, electro the electrodes need to, to touch each other. And it can happen. It's not always happening. And the next part that uh, contributes to the reaction is the cathode. The cathode are these, these compounds where the lithium ions are, are stored then. In, it's where the redu reduction happens. And here, if, if this takes part in the, the reaction, then oxygen can be generated from this cathode. And this oxygen can then react with the electrolyte again, and um, you have again heat generation. So you have a lot of different reactions that can take place, a lot of yeah, material that decompose, and with the decomposition, they generate heat. And the higher the heat, the more decomposition, the more materials are involved, and so on. And then you have the thermal runway. So let's look outside the cell. I mean, maybe before we go outside the cell, one last comment. There is a lot to dive into, into details. Um, there is also a lot of research going on still at universities where they really try to understand every small reaction that takes place at different temperatures. So you can really go very deep into this topic. I leave it here. We go to the cell outside and look what happens outside of the cell. And first, you don't notice anything. Typically, the first thing you might notice is when the uh, vent opens. Like I said before, you have the electrolyte turning into gas. It builds pressure, builds pressure inside the, the cell. And on, on pouch cells, you might have seen it on YouTube videos or so when somebody hammers a nail into the cell. So you see the pouch cell blowing up because this electrolyte turns into gas and then pushes the layers apart from each other. But especially on prismatic and cylindrical cells, the case is very strong. The pressure buildup is really kept by this case. And there you need the vent as a safety element to avoid that the, the cell just ruptures at any random point. You want to have it directed through the vent so you can then direct all of this, this venting gas to some, some place where hopefully it um, creates least harm. Nevertheless, I mean, also as a side comment, uh, it does not always uh, work as intended because it's an abuse reaction like abuse is always very messy you can't just like plan it and say this will always happen the same or so 
we have the cell in front of us. First, nothing happens. Then the vent goes open. Some electrolyte comes out. Now there are cells where it just boils off, kind of the, the electrolyte completely evaporates and then the cells die and you can't do anything with them anymore. Like they really die completely. But more often, I would say, you have then several more steps into this reaction because of course the electrolyte boils, but because everything is so densely inside the cell, densely packed, you have not this free flow of materials and just like everything goes off the, the vent, but sometimes it gets stuck inside and pressure still uh, builds up um, in, in some pockets, for example, or kind of with this opening of the vent, some materials get uh, kind of smashed into the vent and block it. The, the thermal or anyway, the reaction of, of adding energy to this heating continues. And then you reach temperatures that are often above the self-ignition point of these materials, especially of this, these chemicals in the electrolyte. And because everything is so densely packed, there is no oxygen inside the cell. So the, the, when the electrolyte really comes out, it immediately starts to burn. Sometimes there might be also a spark from, from some CID, for example, it's like a current interruption device or so. And these yeah, can then lead to a, a fire and this fire can then blow back basically or, or into the cell and, and make everything burn. Because we also need to consider there's not only the electrolyte and the um, materials inside the, the cell, but the anode is made out of graphite. Graphite is coal more or less and coal burns well. So if you have this inside the reaction, you have really the potential for a fireball. Now, the question is, of course, what to do about it. The key point is really detect it as early as possible. If you see there is an, an heat up, a self heat up, an, an heat up beyond what is normal when you charge and discharge. And especially if this heat up doesn't um, uh, stop at, at one temperature and, and kind of settles, then really investigate this, stop the battery, stop the electrical charging, the electrical operation, because electrical operation adds heat into the, the um, reaction, it adds energy, and cool down the battery. Sometimes you need to even then go into like adding some, some fire extinguishing measures and so on. But basically, if you detect it early enough, it's often enough to just stop it and then the battery will cool down itself because this self heat generation cycle is so slow that it doesn't continue if there's not additional external energy. Yeah, and really make sure that you, I repeat myself here, really make sure that you detect it early because at one point, it is just too hot. Like if you detect it at 80, 90 degrees and say, oh, now the cell is too hot, you might already be beyond this point where you can capture it, capture the uh, thermal runaway, but it just like then goes ahead and, and you sit there and watch it and you can't do anything. Because also one thing, like if you see the battery is heating up and getting warmer and warmer and warmer for your own health, stay away. Don't go there and say, okay, now I, I take the battery, the cell in my hand and bring it outside or I take the battery pack and, and drive it on the forklift through the uh, factory or the lab and bring it somewhere. Because if this really starts in like this fireball, when you have the cell into your hand, you will have a lot of injuries. Uh, so for your own health, just keep it there, let it cool down, make sure that it's ideally in a, in a place with safety elements and then treat it when it has been cooled down. With that, time is already way to you too long. I thank you very much for listening, for watching, and I am looking forward to seeing you, hearing you next week again 
here at the Battery Testing Mentor Podcast.